Panorama TV presents Digital Photography One-on-One, -on -One, where we answer your questions. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hey everybody, welcome to this episode of Digital Photography One-on-One. -on -One. I'm Mark Wallace. Well, this week we have a question from Ulysses, and Ulysses asks, can you make a comparison between speed lights and studio strobes side by side? What are the pros and cons? Well, you bet. Well, let's talk about something that tons of people are talking about, and that is which is better? Is it a studio strobe or is it the old handy speed light? Well, the truth is they're both the best because it depends on which tool you need to use. I mean, we talk about people that just love the speed lights and they swear by them and they think this is the only thing I should ever use. But then you ask them how to use the speed lights and there are all kinds of different opinions if you should use a bunch of these or just one at a time or modifiers or not modifying. And so you get the same thing when you talk to people that use just studio uh, strobes. They want uh, all kinds of different attachments or no attachments. And so there's all kinds of debate over here the truth is it really depends on the tool that you need to do your job and it doesn't depend on which one is more expensive or which one is less expensive. I mean, if you follow that logic, you could look at something like a tractor versus a shovel and you would think that the tractor is always the best thing to use because it's more expensive, but that's just not true. Sometimes you just need a shovel. And the same is true when you're using artificial light. Sometimes speed lights are the thing that you need and sometimes it's a studio strobe. So what we want to do is we want to talk about 11 things that are different about studio strobes and speed lights. And for now, we're just going to set cost aside because we really want to dig into what makes these tools different and that'll help you have a more informed and better decision. Well, the first thing that is different between a studio strobe and a speed light is how we meter the light and control the light. On a speed light, we actually use something called TTL metering, and that means through the lens metering. That means when you throw a speed light on your camera, well, the camera actually can look at the light that's coming from the flash and what's bouncing off the subject, and it will make adjustments to the exposure, either up or down, and change the settings on the camera, or the camera will tell the flash to make adjustments, and they work together, and it really is a, a great thing where you can just take a speed light, throw it on your camera, and you're up and running in no time. Even when you have uh, speed lights off camera, you can do sort of the same thing where you use that TTL metering to control everything. Well, with the studio strobe, you need to use manual metering. You need to use something like a light meter and you need to meter that light. And then once you have that, you need to go and shoot in full manual mode on your camera and then dial everything in manually. And then when you want to control the light coming from the strobe, well, you actually have to go to the strobe and adjust the power right there. And so it's all manual versus some advanced uh, automatic modes with speed lights. And that's one of the big, big differences between these two things. The second big difference is portability. Now, a lot of wedding shooters, location shooters, lifestyle uh, photographers, they love the flexibility of speed lights because they can just grab these guys, throw them in their bags, and it doesn't take a, a big bag to put several of these in a case and you can fly with them. They're not very heavy, as opposed to something like a studio strobe like this that is, has a pack and a head and it's a little bit heavy and it also needs power. You have to plug it into the wall as opposed to speed lights that run on normally AA batteries. And so there's a big difference on uh, which one is more portable. Now for, the, um, for sure, there are studio strobes that do run on batteries and you can buy battery packs to plug these in. So I'm not saying they're not portable, but they are definitely not as portable as a speed light. You can just look at that and see that this is a lot easier to carry around than this big guy here. Well, let's talk about one more thing, the third, and that is output. In other words, how much power comes out of these flashes? Well, a speed light, a really powerful speed light, is going to have about 150 watt seconds of light. Now, watt seconds just means how much power can they store, and so when the flash goes off, how much comes out. So it doesn't really make, uh, mean that you have to know what watt seconds are. It's just a good reference and a good starting point. So if these guys, when they're really powerful, if you get a big one, it's 150 watt seconds. Well, these guys come in watt seconds of 1,200, 2,400, and even 4,800 watt seconds. So there is a huge difference on how much power you can get out of a studio strobe versus a speed light. 
Now, speed lights normally are, don't need all that kind of power because you're usually shooting portraits and shooting in very small locations. And studio strobes, well, you're usually shooting in big studios where you need to bounce the light around and use very, very large light modifiers and soft boxes and all kinds of things. And you might need a lot of that power. So that's one huge difference. Well, there's another thing called refresh rates. Refresh rates are really when you take a picture, how long does it take before the flash is ready to fire again? How long does it take to refresh that? Well, speed lights, uh, they don't shoot very fast. In fact, if you shoot really fast with the speed light, you can actually overheat it and melt it, physically melt the speed light because it gets so hot. Well, studio strobes, they're actually fan cooled and so they, uh, they cool off and they've got these uh, cooling things so they can shoot a lot faster and they refresh a lot faster. And so some studio strobes like the Profoto Pro 8 Air, those guys can shoot at over 10 frames per second. I think uh, somewhere up in the range of 15 frames per second. So almost fast enough to shoot movies uh, with studio strobes. It's pretty insane. Whereas these guys, you can shoot these a couple times per second, um, but generally uh, maybe one or two shots per second at best before these start to overheat. And so for refresh rates and shooting really fast things like fashion and uh, maybe sports where you really need to shoot a lot of shots really fast and not overheat everything, well, the studio strobe is going to win out every single time. Well, that leads us to number five, and that is called flash duration. Now, flash duration we covered in episode 17, but flash duration is something that you use to control motion with the strobe. And so generally, the shorter the flash duration, the better, because short flash durations really freeze things. Well, speed lights actually have shorter flash durations than studio strobes. In fact, you're usually much, slow, uh, much faster flash durations, somewhere in the vicinity of 10,000th of a second with these guys. So they can really freeze motion. But the trade-off is power output. So they don't have a lot of power uh, when they have those really flat, uh, fast flash durations. And so you can get studio strobes that have very short flash durations and high power and very fast refresh rates. But it's going to cost you a lot of money to get that because to get all that stuff in one, um, one unit, there are a lot of things that have to happen. So it's very expensive to get that. Well, again, in episode 17, we talked about flash duration and another thing called sync speed. Now, sync speed is the fastest shutter speed you can use with a flash. Now, normally with a studio strobe, you're limited by that sync speed, and that's usually somewhere around 200th of a second, whereas on uh, your speed lights, you can use something called high speed sync or FP sync, and that means that you can go all the way up to the fastest shutter speed that your camera has. So if you're trying to overpower the ambient light and shoot on location, well, you want that high speed sync to be able to shoot at speeds of 6,000 and 8,000th of a second to really overpower the ambient light using your shutter. And that's something you can do with your speed lights, but you're going to have an issue with your studio strobes. Well, that brings us to number seven, and that is how do you sync your camera to your strobe. Well, back in the olden days when everybody was using these studio strobes, you had to actually use something called a sync cable. And that was this cable looking thing that plugged into your camera and then it plugged into the flash. And then what the flash did is when the camera fired, it would fire the flash as well. Well, luckily there are lots of different ways to sync our camera to our flashes. So first let me talk about some of the stuff that you can do with the studio strobe. And then we'll talk about some of the, uh, the sync uh, devices that you can use with your speed light. Now with the studio strobe, we now have things like pocket wizards that allow us to control or sync our uh, flash uh, with a radio signal instead of a cable. And so what's happening is the uh, radio is sending a signal to the flash and then you don't have to worry about it, all those cables. And so this works great, but all it's going to do is tell the flash to fire. And if you want the flash to do something more than that, uh, maybe you want to control the flash, turn it on, turn it off, turn on the modeling light, turn off the modeling light, adjust the power. Almost all studio strobes don't have any ability to do that. There are a few. In fact, Profoto came up with the Profoto Air system. And so those studio strobes allow you to do all that. You can turn the modeling lights on and off, turn lights on and off. You can set these into different zones and channels. And so you can control hair lights and fill lights and main lights and all kinds of stuff right from the top of your camera. But that's the exception. Most studio lighting setups don't allow you to do that. You actually have to walk around and control everything by uh, physically adjusting controls on the light itself. 
Now that's not the case with speed lights. Most speed lights are the opposite of that. Most speed lights, you can, uh, if you have your speed light on your camera, well, you can control the speed light right from the camera or the back of the speed light. And you can set these up to uh, a master and remote. And so you could have uh, one of these guys controlling another one. And so what you would then be doing is if you want to change the output of this light, well, you can do that right from the top of your camera. It's really nice. And you can do all the kinds of normal speed light controls, exposure compensation, uh, high speed sync, rear curtain sync, all that stuff. You can control it right from the back of your camera, even if your flash is quite a ways away. Well, um, and you can even get a little guy like this. This is a uh, Speedlight Commander. This is a Nikon. Um, and what happens is this will uh, allow you to control your speed lights um, without actually having to physically have a flash on your camera. And that's really nice. One of the issues with these kinds of setups, though, is it's line of sight. It has to actually see the light to flash. And that's been one of the complaints for some of the uh, speed light people. And so um, recently we've seen companies coming up with things like these pocket wizards. This is a mini and flex system. And this uses actually radio signals instead of light to trigger the flashes. And so the flash just sort of slides right on there and you can mount this on a uh, stand. And so what happens is now instead of line of sight, you can use radio signals just like you do with studio strobes and you get the benefit of that TTL metering and all the on-camera control and everything that you would want to get out of the line of sight stuff, but you get that with a radio signal. So now you can put your speed lights behind walls and around corners and at great distances and all that kind of stuff. So you get a lot of flexibility in both systems, but you get more control using the controls, the remote controls of a speed light system over a studio strobe. Well, that leads us to uh, number nine, and that is light modifiers. Now, both of these systems, speed lights and studio strobes, have all kinds of options for light modifiers, things like soft boxes and umbrellas and reflectors and things like that. But generally speaking, studio strobes have more large source options, uh, things like 12 foot umbrellas and uh, 30 foot soft boxes, and just the really, really large light modifiers for shooting things like cars and food photography, things where you need really, really large light sources. And because those light sources are so large, well, you need a lot of power, and that's why studio strobes sort of went out. So for light modifiers and light shaping and really, really dialing in and controlling the light, well, the studio strobes are gonna do a little bit better job than the speed lights, but the cool thing is speed lights do have all kinds of light modifiers. So you can shape the lights with speed lights. Don't hear me saying you can't. You just don't have as much control and as many options as you do with studio strobes. Well, that leads us to our final two items. Number 10 is color temperature. And color temperature is more consistent with a studio strobe. In other words, from flash to flash to flash, the color temperature is going to be consistent over a speed light. And the reason for that is very simple, and that is that these guys normally plug into the wall, whereas these guys run on batteries. And when the power starts to vary and the batteries on the speed light, well, the color temperature is going to start to vary as well. And that's also true of number 11, and that is our exposure from flash to flash. So our exposure on a speed light is pretty consistent until the battery starts to get a little bit low. And once it does, our exposure is gonna to start to wax and wane. So you might have something that's underexposed a little bit or overexposed or no flash fired because the batteries just can't keep up and it's not refreshing fast enough. So that can really throw you off when you're using speed lights until you'll have to know, oh, I need to change my batteries. Well, with studio strobes, you have no batteries usually. And so that exposure is consistent exactly every single time from flash to flash to flash. And so if you need consistent output of color and exposure for catalog work and things like that, where it's really, really critical, well, a studio strobe is the tool for you. Well, we covered a lot of things really, really fast here. And there's a lot more to talk about when you're talking about using speed lights or studio strobes. And so there are three resources that Adorama has for you that I want to throw your way. The first is a uh, seven DVD set that comes from a guy named David Hobby. And David Hobby is known for his incredible website called strobist.com. His seven DVD set is called Lighting in Layers, and it's all about how to use speed lights. There's another guy called Joe McNally that I'm sure you've heard of. He's another speed light wizard, and he has a two DVD set called The Language of Light. It's also available at adorama.com. 
For studio lighting, there is a great uh, DVD set. It's a two DVD set called Studio Lighting Essentials for Portrait Photography. And it's by a guy named Mark Wallace, which, yep, that's me. So I recommend this if you really want to dig in and learn all the uh, different things about metering, studio lighting, direction of light, properties of light, color correction, uh, flash duration, all of that stuff that we talked about with studio lighting, it's all here on this DVD set. So again, that's three different DVD sets depending on what you really want to uh, look at. David Hobby's Lighting and Layers is exceptional. Joe McNally, The Language of Light, it's a two DVD set, and the Studio Lighting Essentials for Portrait Photography set that uh, we created uh, right here, all available at Adorama.com. And there's also the Adorama Learning Center. And we've got a bunch of past episodes that are talking about a lot of the things that we talked about, uh, things about color and color temperature and refresh rates and recycle times and all the products, the uh, soft boxes and reflectors and different uh, brands of light and speed lights and controllers and all that kind of stuff. Well, go to the Adorama Learning Center. You'll find all of that there. In addition to that, there are all kinds of articles that talk to you about using speed lights and studio strobes and posing and getting all your exposures set and which uh, cameras to buy and lenses to use and tripods to use. All of that stuff is at the Adorama Learning Center and it's all free at the Learning Center. So zip on over there and check it out. Now remember, if you have a question about photography, you can always send that to me at askmark at adorama.com. We just might use it on an upcoming episode of Digital Photography One-on-One. -on -one. Well, thanks for joining me. I'll see you again next week. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.